Welcome back to the third and maybe not so final video in our firewall rules that we've been working on with the edge router. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in. And if you remember, this is about the uh, WAN local firewall rules. So let's pull up our firewall policies. And we've got WAN local. And it's ETH0, which is our WAN interface. And it is local. So what, what does this mean? What this means is this is traffic that is destined for a service on the router. And I might be oversimplifying that, but that might be a good place to start under, understanding it. And the reason you can kind of think about it that way is if, you know, we want to allow ICMP, this is where we do it. If we want to allow, you know, to ping that WAN interface, or if we want to allow a lockdown source, you know, to come in to SSH or to HTTPS to manage this guy, or if we want to, um, you know, set up our PPTP rules, or let's say that this guy is remote somewhere and you want to get SNMP from it. You know, this is this is something that we would have to configure. So let's take a look at this, you know, how we would make some of these these rules. Now I do want to put a disclaimer out here that should you have to open your web interface, your HTTPS, to the outside world, that you lock it down to a source that is not open for everyone to be able to connect. I also recommend that you change the port, the HTTPS port. And if you look back through my videos, you will see a video on how to change that port. Um, you know, make it something obscure. Don't make it easy, but lock it down if you have to. You know, another way to do this would be to set up the PPTP server, remote into this guy, and then open the internal IP GUI GUI session instead of having it open to the outside world. If you have to open SSH, lock it down, change the port, use key-based authentication instead of password authentication, make it as secure as possible. You know, uh, hackers and mischievous people, you know, count on you, first of all, using UBNT and UBNT as a username and password. Don't do that. Choose a different username and password, something secure. Use a mixture of uppercase, lowercase, special characters, numbers, you know, make it seven plus characters. Uh, this is another one of those things, you know, ask a thousand IT guys, get a thousand different answers, you know, how many characters does my password have to be? Um, my recommendation, I would go over eight, but I wouldn't make it so long that you've got to write it down and I would make it complicated. Uh, one thing that I like to do, and I'm going to bring up a notepad here, is, um, uh, sometimes I will take songs and take the, the letter out of, um, each word of a song and create a password. So, you know, Mary had a little lamb. It's fleece was white as snow and you can substitute, you know, characters and, and things like that. So, you know, you have a mnemonic to kind of, you know, keep it fresh and so you don't forget it and have to write it down. Um, and, you know, you could use this password, you know, you could just capitalize the beginning and uh, put a one and a bang at the end. And that's, you know, it's not based on an English word it's not you know not based on a dictionary word you know this should be relatively relatively secure i mean i wouldn't say that this is the most secure password you could create but it's not like you used your first and last name and it's definitely not not ubnt ubnt you know so create a you know a different user and uh you know, anytime you open any of those those services to the outside world, make sure it's locked down as much as possible. So now that I've given you like a <laughs> fair warning on that, let's take a look at, at these rules. So if we want to allow SSH into this 
from the outside we'd edit the rule set and we'd add a new rule and we would call it you know allow SSH now we're going to accept it would be TCP and then it'd be port 22 so as this is created this is open to the outside world because we've not specified a source now if I've got a main you know admin network and I've got static IPs you know um, we could uh, I'm just gonna use the the Google DNS but we could um, you know tie it down so now only 8.8.8.8 .8 is allowed to SSH into this so you could create an HTTPS rule you could create an SNMP rule and basically this WAN local, the way it is set up out of the box is, you know, this is set up for things that are stopping at this, at this router. So if you need to do those, those outside services, and SNMP is a good example because a lot of times, you know, people will monitor devices remotely and sometimes you'll use, you know, you'll use a, um, You'll use a combination of ICMP and SNMP to accomplish that. You know, SNMP is going to pull your statistics from your interfaces, your CPU, your memory, all that good stuff. And then ICMP is just simply just going to check, you know, it's just going to ping it to, to see if it's alive. So we could ping, we're going to accept, and we'll choose a protocol by name, and we'll select... ICMP. We'll save this guy. And now everybody can ping, you know, this device, the WAN interface of this device. So play around with these rules. Now there's a, another kind of local rules when we talk about it, and it would be, you know, if I had, let's say that I had, uh, E3 set up on actually let's see how do we have this guy set up okay perfect example so we've got switch 0 that has ETH 2 3 and 4 and the address is 192.168.2.1 slash 24 for switch 0 then ETH 1 um, is its own network 192.168.1.1 slash 24 you could create other rules to keep traffic segregated from these two networks on the same router. If you want to see those those rules and, and that demo, please put it in the comments. If I get enough people who want to see that, I'll go ahead and create that video. So otherwise, I'm going to you know leave you to experiment with these rules. If uh, you like the video, give a thumbs up, please subscribe, please comment and share and you know hang in there we've got a lot of great videos coming up i've got a, a, a video i'm probably going to break it into two videos but i did some traveling over the last week or so and i want to talk about wi-fi security and the reason i want to talk about it is because i stayed at a hotel and i walked into the the hallway and lo and behold there's a ubiquity access point staring me in the face and so i connected to it started using it and I thought, well, you know, let's see what's going on. And they had absolutely, I could see every Ubiquiti access point on the entire property. I could see their entire AirMax infrastructure. And I am drafting a letter. I did not try to log in, but just the fact that I can see that is a huge concern for me. So uh, I'm going to do, you know, a two or three video series on that. And I am, I was actually, I tested the wireless security at at least four places. All of them failed miserably. So, um, and sometimes we set networks up purposefully to watch uh, traffic and see what people are doing, but this was definitely not the case. Um, so I am drafting letters to the management just to let them know what I found and if they'd like, you know, any tips on, you know, locking that down, I can help them with that. But once again, if you like the video, give a thumbs up, comment, you know, subscribe, share the videos. Uh, and, you know, I do have a lot of Ubiquity videos coming up, some more Linux videos. Let me know what you want to see, and we'll see you soon.